What's good, YouTube? Future22J is back at you with another video. If you aren't already, please take the time out to stop. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a like on this video. And please follow me on Instagram, Trade Block, and TikTok at Future22J is. Now, with the shoes that I have for you guys today, it just released a couple of days ago. I just managed to get my pair, and I'm so disappointed that I'm not able to keep this pair because for some odd reason, the sizing on this shoe is way different than what it was when I purchased it ways back. So, getting into it, as you you guys can see we have our original Air Jordan 12 Retro Box Jordan brand before he became his own brand. Air Jordans used to come in the Nike boxes that were similar to this. The label reads, Air Jordan 12 Retro. The colorway is white, black, varsity red. The Air Jordan 12 Retro Cherry. Cherry 12 is probably one of the highest anticipated retros of this year. It was on a lot of people hit list, myself included. I kind of feel like that if you really wanted this shoe, there's no way that you couldn't have gotten this shoe. They did a shock drop on them maybe two to three weeks before release day on Sneakers App. And then of course, we had our Sneakers App release. We all know that the smaller sizes are still sitting around maybe from eight to size 10 but ultimately 10 and a half, maybe 11 on up has vanished. Getting into the details, as you can see, we have a black, white, and red outsole with a black and white carbon fiber running down the arch of the shoe. It's one of the bottoms that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's still a gum bottom at the end of the day. Now, what I'm very impressed with is the leather that's on the mud guard. In the 2009 pair, the red leather on the mud guard wasn't as firm and it wasn't as thick as this pair is. I really like on how Jordan brand implemented that and made this sole more sturdy and the shoe is going to last much 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 longer now the leather that they chose for this shoe is absolutely amazing it doesn't seem too much different from the last counterpart the 2009 pair has some pretty decent leather on it as well we have the infamous back panel <laughs> you know it's not going to be all crunched in and scrunched in when you wear it a couple of times it is on a very nice thick piece of fabric it has the quality inspired by the greatest player ever we have the black jump man alongside with the two3 going down the tongue of the shoe. Black sock liner was something that they should put on almost every shoe that's predominantly white anyway. For some reason, it just looks better that way to me. That sounds of the entirety of it. In the comment section below, you guys let me know, did you guys make a play for this? Did you double up? Did you triple up? This is one of those classic, classic, classic silhouettes that a lot of sneakerheads should have in their collection. There's a lot of people that don't really rock with 12s. This is a hood shoe. Everybody loves those 12s, 11s, 13s, and 6s. As long as it has that red in it, it's gone. I know there's a lot of pairs still sitting around in the stores. Christmas is right around the corner. So there's no way you guys could think that this shoe is going to sit around and you guys are going to wait for a discount. No, sir. I'm not saying go make a play for them now because I know that 210 is very hefty. But if you are size 11 and up, I will say you just have to go on and make your play for this shoe. Make sure you have it in your collection before the end of the year because around tax time, these are definitely going to be teetering around the $275 to $300 range and that's way entirely too much money to be paying for a GR. It was kind of bummy to me that I had to let this pair ride. I would have had it on foot for you guys, but the last Air Jordan 12 that I personally purchased was that black and gold retro 12 that released maybe what, 2018 or 2020? It might have been 2020, but nonetheless, that was the last Air Jordan Retro that I purchased and for the longest. I've always worn 11 and a half in Retro 12, but for this in particular pair, I could not fit. It is so tight around this mid panel and with this super thick leather that they have off the mud guard, it's not going to stretch at all. So I would have to say, make sure you go true to size with this shoe if you want the most comfortable fit. Unfortunately, I had to let this pair ride, but I know for a fact that I'll be able to get my size 12 sometime later on in the future. I'm doing the trade off for a pair of Thunder Force in a size 12. I've never been able to cop this shoe for retail and I refuse to cop this shoe for over retail. I'm just going to give this pair to my boy Dope Intentions. We're going to do a complete swap. No extra money, no any of that. Shout out to my boy Dope Intentions because the pair of Thunder Force is something that I really, really need. Now, I really, really need these Cherry 12s as well, but with it being a fresh release, I know there's a great chance that I'm going to come up on a pair in an outlet or anything 
nothing of the sort. So and I'm not able to get the on footer for you guys, but I'm more than sure you guys have seen plenty if you haven't gotten them on your own feet. So that basically sums up the review. My name is Future 22 J is, and if you don't know, please know that there is no ceiling to your inner potential. This was my review of the Air Jordan 12 Retro Terry. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Be sure to dream with your eyes open and always remember that your fear ends when your faith begins. Peace.